Hi guys, so um, for the next stage of Project Espresso, um, and hopefully this one should actually be the final video, uh, but while I'm waiting on plumbing fittings to finalise the plumbing side of things, I'm turning my attention to the prettification side of things, the cosmetics, and this is the front panel. Um, most of them are stainless steel, the side panels are painted in a sort of uh, pale brown kind of cream, um, cafe au lait I guess you might say. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do anything with those, I've, I've, I've kind of got a couple of ideas of what I'd like to um, add a bit of painty bits. But anyway, this is the stainless steel front cover that goes in front of the drip tray and the paint on the Wega logo was scratched and faded and worn away from numerous cleanings and what have you. So I cleaned all the paint off and I've repainted it. So it's still to be completed, but you can see there the idea behind this one. Uh, we've got a nice Italian flag going on and um, across the letters obviously this is all masked up currently once this masking comes off you'll be able to see that and i'm going to do something a little bit extra with the cup that's surrounding the w i've received a pile of goodies today uh, new seals and uh, essentially service service kits for various items and you're probably looking at this and thinking it looks it looks even more stripped down than it was uh, in the last video clip and you'd be right but that's only because I've just um, taken all the relevant panels off to access the um, the plumbing bits such as the taps which I've rebuilt with their new uh, the new service kits, new seals and such like, and then these need to go back in. I've still got to do the steam tap, and then these just simply screw back in, and then all the panels and everything can go back on. I ordered and have trial fitted the um, group gasket, and because my group handles are a little bit worn, and the group head is a little bit worn, because this is quite an old machine, it has had a lot of use in commercial environments, uh, they do wear the plating wears and wears to the brass and, and as a result the handles tend to start pulling a bit more right of centre. Um, I will know for the next, uh, when I order the next gasket, I, I only ordered the one uh, suspecting this might be the case, but when I order the next gasket I will know to order an 8.5 or some paper shims. Um, with hindsight I should have ordered some, some shims this time around, but I didn't. So I've made some out of some baking sheet which is obviously food safe and uh, a couple of those should give me just that extra little edge that I need. They're going to sit on top and put up, push up into the group head. Fitting this is easy. It's got a flat side and a curved side. The curved side goes up and, um, and the flat side is where the group, the portafilter handle sits. So with these gaskets and this group, group gasket, it's a case of fitting them up into the gap fitting that up there and then seating it with a group handle. So once it's all in, you take one of your group handles, you just pop that up into there and then you pull it round like you would when you're locking it. And that will actually push the gasket and seat it firmly while also seating against there and, and providing the seal. Uh, once it's in, they're very hard to take out without damaging them. So it does um, it needs to be a one-shot deal. Uh, you need to be absolutely certain you've got it the right way around and you put it in uh, the right way around because they're very hard to take out once you've put them in. They are, obviously new ones are more flexible than older ones that have gone hard, but they, uh, they are nonetheless easy to damage if you try and pry them out because they're a very tight fit around the group head. You can buy silicone ones nowadays though, which I assume would be much more uh, friendly to uh, being pulled in and out because they're going to be much more flexible and probably remain much more flexible. So I'm going to go ahead and refit the taps. I'm going to refit the group gasket and I, uh, I'm, I'm, there's a couple of other bits of gaskets to fit into the back of the group and various parts. The only one I couldn't find um, just at the moment is this gasket here. Uh, I did buy one thinking it might fit, but unfortunately it's too thick. It will not fit into there. This will have to do for the moment and um, because I just simply have no other choice and I will have to have a look around to try and find 
uh, a seal for for this uh, dispersion plate which screws on a threaded uh, uh, its own thread around the external periphery there onto the group head and then the shower screen screws onto the bottom of there and I also have a new shower screen. The shower screen that was on actually cleaned up okay, looks okay, doesn't look like it's clogged or anything but they're not particularly expensive, they are a service item so I thought I'll throw a, a new shower screen on there as well. So I'm going to go ahead and put all these on and then we can look at getting the panels on and I've got everything to get this up and running and ready except the hose to plumb the flexi into the the mains water. I'm waiting on, I need a, a hose which is going to take it from the tap connection down there up to the flexi. I was hoping that was going to arrive today, it hasn't, hopefully tomorrow, um, but in the meantime I will still be able to use the bottles and run it and actually test it, pull a test shot and what have you. So I'm going to get on with this and we'll be back in a moment to put the panels on. So we've now got the new group gasket in, we've got the uh, water and steam taps and you can see it's, it's actually when you pull that tight it's just ever so slightly right of centre, it's not quite bang on centre but it's close enough for now, happy enough with that. Uh, those two shims made a little bit of a difference before it was locking and it was in that kind of position which was just a bit too far around for me so that's you know that's pretty good I'm happy with that. And next thing is start putting the um, the panels back on. So the first one with its control buttons, you need to plug the power cord in at the back. That only goes in one way, so you can't get that wrong. And this slots on and moving the wiring out of the way so we don't catch that and damage it, because that wouldn't be good. And then these slide under here somewhere. I've got some Allen keys. And just nip those up like so. Pretty much everything from this point is held on with Allen screws or Allen bolts. And uh, next up are the panels. Uh, the rear and the front panels need to be fitted first because they bolt onto these and then the side panels sit on these little rails and bolt into the side of the rear and front panels. So just go ahead and unscrew these. And what I'm going to do just now is take off my lav mic so I've got a bit more freedom of movement because I'm, I'm wired to the camera just now. So uh, I'm going to cut the sound and just carry on with this and I'll probably sort of zoom through this bit, uh, speed it up when we, when we get it onto video. Right at this point, um, I've tightened up the side panels on here, but I've left the front and rear just finger tight because that will allow a little bit of wiggle back and forth, as you can see, for when the side panels are fitted on, um, because they fit into little locating slots on the side panels. The side panels are uh, unique to each side. Um, you'll notice also my my painted logo there. We'll we'll see that in close up soon. Uh, I've got a feeling this is going to be a little bit of a marmite thing because when I painted this, when I started painting it, 
I, I sort of had the idea with the Italian flag and I wanted to do something a little bit different with the cup. You might not be able to see it from there, but you'll see it in close up shortly. And I painted it all up and I was thinking, yeah, I like that. It looks really good. And then this morning I sat there and carefully um, unmasked it, sort of trimmed around the edges of the letters, peeled all the masking tape off. And I looked at it and I thought, do I like that? You know, I'm not sure now. And I sort of ummed and odd. But the more I've been looking at it throughout today, the more I'm thinking, I like that. That's a bit different. And the original Wager logo looks like this. And I'm sure you've probably seen it, but that's how this front one originally looked, uh, which was nice enough, but uh, the it was all sort of scratched and scuffed from repeated cleanings. Obviously, the back of the machine doesn't get to see as, as much cleaning, especially if it's up backed up against a wall, which in some cases it is. So I'm, I'm pleased with that. I like that Italian little flag design. I think some people, I think that's going to divide opinions. I think some people are going to think that's really cool and some people are going to go, ooh, no, not sure about that. But it's, it's my little nod to the, um, the origins and birthplace of my little Wega espresso machine. That's pretty much how the whole thing goes together. You've then got the drip tray, which of course is deliberately designed to slide in and out so it can be taken out and cleaned. And you've got access to your drain tray there. Speaking of which, I almost forgot. Uh, here's the drain hose, which is, as you can see, a clear but reinforced drain hose so even if something sits on it it's not going to collapse and block up and have water back up so that's that's the drain hose I've got to fit um, and the right the other panel I'm not going to put on just at the moment until I've heated up the machine run it through its cycle again and the final bit is the lid which simply sits on the top now at some point in its life this was secured. It's got two screw holes and two, two mounting points. Uh, the screws for that are long gone. I'm not even remotely bothered about that because it's kind of handy to be able to just lift this up and have a peek inside and see what's going on. Um, so while I could find replacement screws for that, I'm not, even, I'm not bothered at all. This has got vents on the top which is for passive heating for you to sit your cups on and the heat from the boiler will come up through here and warm up your cups. Um, so yes, that kind of gives you an idea. Obviously I've got to tighten everything up and jiggle it all and make sure it's all straight, but that gives you an idea of what's what. So I'm gonna cut off, finish um, putting these bolts in and tightening them up. I'm gonna leave this panel off on this side just so I can keep an eye on, on what's going on and spot any uh, any obvious drips or what have you, but it should be okay because we've run the test previously. I'm gonna put the new hose on, that's just a push fit uh, onto the drain tray and I'm gonna drain that into the sink just now. I might plumb that later, uh, I might leave it there, I don't know, not decided. And then uh, the only thing that's actually left to do is plumb in the mains water, but for now I'm going to plug it into our uh, temporary water container, which has served as well so far. I'm going to heat everything up. I'm going to run a quick cycle through, make sure it's okay. And then I'm going to pull the first shot. So you guys are going to join me for the very first shot on the rebuilt Wager. Back shortly. The machine's heated up and it's ready to go. But first of all, we are taking a look at the uh, Wager uh, badge that I repainted. And um, in close up, see what you think. And obviously, as you can see, we've gone for the whole Italian flag kind of thing. And I've, I've tried to do a bit of a fade between the green uh, and white and between the red and white over here rather than a hard line. Uh, worked a bit better on the green. Um, I messed up a little bit on the red and I kind of tried to recover it. It doesn't look too bad, but it could have been better. And with the coffee cup, I was just going to do the whole thing in white originally, whereas the original one would be red with a black Wager logo. And then I thought it'd be kind of interesting to try and make it look a bit like a, a layered 
sort of uh, latte. So we've got the sort of darker coffee bit going up to the creamier colour and then the white top there. So uh, let me know what you think. Uh, pop a comment in as to whether you think that looks okay or whether you, you know, or not. Um, and, and we'll see. But we're just going to pull the first shot now. Exciting stuff. That's 16 grams of coffee, same as I use in the Gaggio double basket. Uh, 18 seems to be just a little bit too much, a bit too full and 16 gives a nice rounded flavour. I don't know how this is going to pull at the moment. It doesn't matter on Julie because this first shot is unfortunately a sacrificial one because you have to run one through to season it after everything's been cleaned because it will just taste horrible. So what I'm going to do, quick flush. Lock in the group head and Right, so a little short there, so I need to adjust that grind so it's ever so slightly coarser, but that is a good first shot. That looks good, a nice crammer, and this is cheap beans as well. This is, uh, as I say, I, I usually buy cheap supermarket beans for the uh, seasoning sacrificial shots on, uh, on an espresso machine, because why waste good beans when you can use ones that aren't? So I'm uh, pleased enough with that for starters. As said, um, that one's just down the sink because it's for the purposes of uh, seasoning everything. So I'm gonna set that back up again and we'll pull an actual shot to taste. Okay, so we're gonna go with another pour and see how this one does. Oddly, that one was just slightly, um, slightly too quick. Just, just ever so slightly, just a little bit. Um, but this, this is uh, the thing with the grinder. You're talking minute tweaks when you get to this kind of level. So a uh, bit of a taste test. And then uh, I'm gonna steam some milk and we'll pour a latte because all this hard work, I think, deserves a nice creamy latte. So we've got a nice shot there, nice crammer. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. I thought at first hint of bitterness, but I think if anything, that's just the roast of the bean. It's, they're very oily beans, these. But that's not bad. But what I'm going to do now is the remainder of it going into there. We'll steam some milk. How quick this is. So, so quick compared to the Gaja. Uh, that's crazy.
always purge your wand and last thing you want is milk getting sucked up into your steam wand I think I need to practice a little bit with the multi hole tip there because uh, but um, the bubbles are a bit too big on this. But let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do. Oh, it's been a while this, so. Apologies in advance for the crappy latte art. Oh, 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 oh. And spelling everywhere. <laughs> so, if we bring the camera over, I think that's probably going to be the least messy option here. There we go. Um, appallingly bad latte art and um, had a bit of a spillage there, unfortunately. But it's been a while, I just need to get to some practicing again. Uh, but all in all, I'm I'm absolutely delighted so far. This is this is great. I'm loving it. So that pretty much. Mm. This is the beauty about rubbish beans from the supermarket. Uh, for drinking coffee black, which I do typically, um, most of my day is black coffee. But occasionally, I do like a latte. And supermarket beans are just perfect, to be honest, for, uh, for milk-based drinks because it takes the edge off. They're usually over-roasted. Uh, that's the general uh, sort of go-to on them. Uh, the one exception I've found is Taylor's of Harrogate. They do a roast called Lazy Sunday. It's hit and miss as to how fresh they are, but if you get a relatively fresh batch, they're really, really nice. And that's one, if I'm out and about, and I haven't roasted um, enough beans to be going on with, uh, when I go traveling off to see friends or what have you, uh, I will always pick up Taylor's uh, Lazy Sunday. So I recommend that one, give that one a try if you're in the UK. Um, I don't know that you'd get them anywhere else, but I've got to say, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm impressed by the performance. Ooh, that is so nice, so nice. It's great, the steaming is like lightning, it's so, so quick. And what I'm gonna to have to do next, of course, is practice pulling a shot and steaming at the same time, because I've been so used to doing them separately on the gadget, uh, because obviously you can't do them at the same time. So it'll be quite a novelty being able to pull a shot, steam the milk and have it steamed um, before the shot even finishes. And, uh, and and then just be able to pour it straight away. So that's that's just great. Well, thank you so much for watching. If you stuck with me throughout the whole process, um, it's been a long one with a big big gap in in between. And I know that um, due to various circumstances and uh, just not having the inclination to sort of get on with it. Uh, I'm now going to put the rest of this together. I'm not seeing any obvious leaks or anything. It seems to be performing like it should. The only thing left to do is plumb in the mains. And I'm really pleased with how everything else is going. It's great. At some point in the near future, I can foresee a, um, a rotary pump rebuild. Because on one of the weep holes, I did notice a little bit of corrosion. And that means the bearing at the rear has, has been subject to a bit of corrosion, most likely. So in the near future, I, I, can, I can foresee a bit of a rebuild on the rotary pump. But other than that, I'm delighted. Absolutely delighted with it. I'm going to get the other panel on now and I think what I might do um, next, in fact I will, I'm going to do a comparison, I'm going to do a comp comparison um, pour and latte, um, uh, steam, pour steam and, and latte on the Gadget versus this, just, just for, you know, I mean I know they're not comparable machines, but just, just for the fun of it, just to see the sort of time difference. Uh, but cheers everybody and whatever coffee you're drinking enjoy however you're drinking it enjoy and uh, thank you for sticking with me through this build and we will see you in the next video ooh, 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 ooh.